It is now time for oral questions. The member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Uh, whenever the Premier talks of uh, economics these days, he's sure to use the word global. Uh, it's a see-through attempt to shift the blame, a tactic that the Premier has honed to a, to, to a, hone, to a fine art. Of course the recession is global. Everyone knows that. But that doesn't mean the Premier is powerless. He needs to take some responsibility. BC, Alberta, PEI, Newfoundland are all faring better than Ontario. And economists predict that they will recover quickly. Meanwhile, we have lost almost 300,000 manufacturing jobs while the Premier has sat on his hands. This has been happening since 2004, and yet he has shown no urgency, no recognition of the seriousness of this issue. His lack of foresight has left us unprepared and led us to a deeper recession than we might otherwise have expected. Premier, why are you satisfied with being last place in Canada. Shameful. Premier. Speaker, I, uh, as usual, I, I welcome the question, and as usual, I uh, differ with the interpretation of the facts and the nature of the cause of the challenge before us. I agree with my colleague insofar as he recognizes that the, um, that the recession is worldwide, uh, but I disagree with his, uh, his uh, inference that somehow it started here at Queen's Park in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Speaker, we've been doing a number of things for many years to lend further strength to the Ontario economy. It's just that we fail to receive the support from the opposition as we pursue those right. important initiatives. Right. For example, Speaker, back in 2006, our budget was principally focused on investing heavily in infrastructure. We have hundreds of projects underway right now, creating thousands and thousands of jobs right now when we need them, Speaker. Yes, Speaker, we, it would have been good, it would have been nice to have the support of the opposition at that point in time, Speaker, but unfortunately, we moved ahead, notwithstanding, in the interests of the people of Ontario. Country. Speaker, it's that kind of empty rhetoric that has led Ontario into have-not status. The fact is that the Premier squandered the good times and, is do and in so doing has left us unprepared for the bad times. He raised taxes to record levels, levels that would make Bob Ray blush. He spent wildly and recklessly, including a million dollars to the, to the Toronto Cricket Club. He dismissed us when we warned him that the, there was a looming recession and he called us pessimists and, had, and, and, and spoke about a small contraction, a small contraction indeed. This too shall pass, he said. When the rest of Canada turns the economic corner, Ontario will still be struggling in the, with the recession because even now you won't take the necessary steps to ease the transition. Premier, are you frozen in fear or are you stumped as to what to do? Premier. Speaker, I, uh, again, I appreciate the observations, but I disagree with them. Um, Speaker, the, uh, From the uh, official opposition has for some time now said that um, uh, they're very concerned about the uh, size of the deficit that uh, we are projecting. But, Speaker, I want you to understand uh, some of the demands that they've been put, putting forward, uh, notwithstanding their concerns about the deficit. We've been keeping track of their questions since we returned to the House. Ooh. They've asked so far 25 spend questions. Ah. Spend. They're asking that we spend more on everything from an airport, adult literacy programs, a, 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 a lumber mill speaker, MRI machines, a bridge, several questions on hospitals. Uh, mental health. These are all good issues, Speaker. They are very debatable, Speaker, and important concerns advanced on behalf of their constituents. But you can't have it both ways, Speaker. You can't say that we got to cut public services and invest in them at the same time. Final supplementary. The plan, the Liberal plan, is simply not working. And I wonder if the 1,500 recently laid off steel workers in Hamilton. I wonder if they think your plan is working. I wonder if the 1,200 recently laid off workers at Chrysler in Windsor, I wonder if they think that your plan is, wondering, is working. I wonder if the unemployed miners and workers in Sudbury think your plan is working. It seems to me that the only people convinced this plan is working is the Liberal lapdogs that sit behind the Premier in this House. Yet the stubborn Premier refuses to change course. Premier, Premier are you ready to take ownership of the state of Ontario's economy. Are you willing to accept some blame for all these job losses? If not, Premier, why are you still leading this province? Uh, Premier. Uh, 
Speaker, we take uh, full responsibility for pursuing initiatives on behalf of the people of Ontario. Speaker, in particular, uh, my, my colleague mentions that, um, that families are, are suffering as a result of job losses. That is absolutely true. Perhaps they are possessed of some special magic over there that would prevent any of that from happening anywhere in the province of Ontario, but we on this side of the House are not, Speaker. We have to deal with reality. We are going to continue to pursue our five-point plan. Yep. One of the most important Solid aspects of that plan is to develop the skills and strength of our workforce, Speaker. And I'm happy that today, Speaker, we will be announcing that once again we've increased the high school graduation rate, Speaker. Yep. It's gone from 70... It's gone from yeah, it 75 last year at 77. 77. Right. It's gone from 68 percent to 77 percent, Speaker, which means we're having many thousands more of young people graduating high school every year.